we are discussing today the vertical block exemption regimes in the European Union and the UK and how there are now some key differences post-Brexit in respect of these vertical exemptions. After a one-year transitional period for a commercial agreements concluded before the 1st of June 2022 to be brought in line with the new vertical block exemption regimes applicable in the European Union and the United Kingdom, it is time to take stock. What are the main changes in the new EU regulation affecting vertical agreements? How do the UK order on vertical block exemption differs from the new EU framework. What can we expect in the near to medium term future in terms of enforcement of these regimes on national and pan-European commercial agreements and distribution networks? What are the best options for cross-border businesses now that two vertical block exemption regimes exist side by side in the EU and the UK. So let's first have a look at the vertical block exemption regimes. What are the legal frameworks in the EU and the UK? Well, vertical agreements are a common feature of the economy. They are agreements between businesses operating at different levels of a production and distribution chain. For example, distribution agreements between manufacturers and wholesalers or retailers. Since the 1st of May 2004, in the member states of the European Union, companies have been required to self-assess whether they vertical agreements comply with competition law, superseding the prior negative clearance regime. In a self-assessment context, a block exemption is valuable providing a safe harbor for businesses which allows them to proceed with confidence provided that the agreement respects stipulated thresholds and features. Up until 31st of May 2022, a single self-assessment exercise would have covered compliance with competition law in the EU and the UK. However, since Brexit, the EU and UK legal frameworks on vertical agreements have, have diverged. Let's have a look at how there's a divergence now. So the EU legal framework is based on Article 101 of the Treaty on the Functioning of the European Union. It's quite a mouthful. Treaty on the Functioning of the European Union, so TFEU. And Article 101 prohibits agreements between companies and any concerted practice susceptible to affect trade between EU member states and which object or effect is to limit or alter the competition game inside the common market. However, Article 101, Paragraph 3 of the TFEU provides for various exemptions to such prohibitions set out in Article 101, Paragraph 1. In particular, in relation to categories of vertical agreements and concerted practices. So that means that the principle is that there is a general prohibition of agreements which restrict trade. However, there is an exception set out in paragraph three of Article 101 of the TFEU, which provides that, provided that certain conditions are, are met, vertical agreements and concerted practices are okay, are exempted for, from this general prohibition. There are various EU regulations updated on a regular basis every 12 years. The EU has empowered the European Commission to adopt block exemption regulations relating to vertical agreements, thereby gradually constructing its legal framework concerning the application of Article 101, Paragraph 3, to categories of vertical agreements and concerted practices as follows. So the first regulation was Regulation 2790 from December uh, 99. So that was the first one. Then it expired on the 31st of May 2010, and it was replaced by Regulation 
3310 from the 20th of April 2010, which all expired on the 31st of May 2022. And now there's the third, number three, third iteration of this regulation, which is regulation 332022 slash 720, okay, from the 10th of May 2022 on the application of Article 101, 101, Paragraph 3 to categories of vertical agreements and concerted practices. So from now on, we're going to call this current regulation, regulation 2022, uh, 720, um, which came in effect on the 1st of June, 2022. So those EU vertical block exemption regulations are complemented with guidelines on vertical restraints, setting out the principles for the assessment of vertical agreements under article 101 of the TFEU. So the guidelines and the latest and current are the guidelines on vertical restraints 2022 C248. So just to let you know, all these documents and regulations and guidelines that I'm citing, they can be viewed on our website, crefovi.com and crefovi.fr in our latest thought leadership article that we've um, published yesterday in English on crefovi.com and in French on crefovi.fr. So you are welcome to check this out on the publication section of our websites and you will be able to, to see all these, all these documents for yourselves. So the gist of the EU regulations and guidelines is that the block exemptions provide widely applicable safe harbors for vertical agreements from the EU prohibitions and anti-competitive agreements, provided the parties have market shares of less than 30% of their respective markets, and that the agreements do, do not contain any hardcore restrictions of competition, such as, for example, resale price maintenance. If an agreement does not benefit from a block exemption, then this contract will need to be assessed individually for compliance with EU competition law. Thanks to these block exemptions, European companies can lawfully set up selective distribution networks or even exclusive distribution networks, depending on the needs of an appropriate strategy for their products and brands. So what now is the system applicable in the UK? Well, section two of the UK Competition Act 1998 the Act prohibits agreements between companies and any concerted practice susceptible to affect trade within the UK and which object or effect is to limit or alter the competition game inside the UK. So Section 2 of the Act is the equivalent of Article 101, Paragraph 1 of the TFEU. Then Section 6 of the Act provides that the UK Competition Markets Authority, the CMA, may recommend that the UK Secretary of State makes an order specifying certain categories of vertical agreements, which in the opinion of the CMA should be exempted via block exemption. It's called a block exemption order. And in compliance with section eight of the act, before making any recommendation, the CMA must publish some details of its proposed recommendations and consider the presentations about it which were made to it by members of the public who decided to actually participate to a consultation organized by the CMA prior to issuing the block exemption order. So of course when the UK used to be an EU member state the above mentioned EU block exemptions regulations and guidelines applied directly in the country in the in the UK Two, without any need for transposition or enactment of any national block exemption order. However, since exiting the EU via its Brexit in 2021, the UK retained the EU regulation 330-2010 as retained EU vertical agreement block exemption regulation. But then on 1st of June 2022, when such um, EU regulation expired, uh, the UK replaced it with its own Competition Act 1998 Vertical Agreements Block Exemption Order 2022. So quite a mouthful, Competition Act 1998 Vertical Agreement Block Exemption Order 2022, which we are going to shorten to VABO. <laughs> VABO, VABO. So the VABO is complemented with a guidance on how the CMA applies 
the chapter one prohibition in the act to vertical agreements and on the application of the VABO to vertical agreements. So that's called the guidance. Also, you can see this uh, guidance for yourself on our own website. Like uh, the EU exemption regulations and guidelines, the VABO and guidance provide for widely applicable safe harbors for vertical agreements from the UK prohibitions on anti-competitive agreements, provided the parties have market shares of less than 30% on their respective markets, and the agreement does not contain any hardcore restrictions of competition. If an agreement does not benefit from the block exemption, then the agreement will need to be assessed individually for compliance with UK competition law. Both the EU regulation 2022-720 and the UK VBO allowed a one-year transitional period for agreements concluded before 1st of June 2022 to be brought in line with the new regimes. So on the 1st of June 2023, then this one-year transitional period terminated. With both EU and UK regimes now applicable to old and new vertical agreements alike, this article and uh, webinar provides an overview of the key differences between EU regulation 2022-720 and the UK VBO. So what has changed in the EU regulations? Well, regulations 2022-720 is the result of extensive evaluation and consultation with stakeholders across the EU and introduces material change to the scope of a safe harbor in particular. In short, this is an evolution rather than a revolution. Regulation 2022-720's central framework remains the same. Certain restrictions in vertical agreements between businesses operating different levels in the supply chain, like manufacturers, distributors, and retailers are assumed to benefit from an efficiency defense under Article 101, Paragraph 3 of the TFU, as long as the party's market shares are below 30%, and they are not competitors, with some exceptions, and the agreement does not contain a hard cost of restrictions. There is also still a separate list of so-called excluded restrictions, which are not automatically block exempted and which require case-by-case -case assessment. However, the perimeter of a safe harbor has been partially redrawn with a view, according to the European Commission, to eliminate false positives and reduce false negatives. The Commission has also updated the guidelines with a stated goal of providing more certainty to businesses navigating these tricky waters. So let's focus on the five areas of change in the EU regulation 2022. 720. First area of change relates to dual distribution. The Commission's evaluation indicated that the dual distribution model, where a supplier sells directly to end consumers, as well as via independent distributors with whom the supplier therefore competes downstream on the retail market, so this dual distribution model is more prevalent today than when the initial EU block exemption regulation was introduced and that, that it may raise non-negligible horizontal competition concerns. Indeed, in the dual distribution scenario from a distributor's perspective, suppliers are both partners at the supply level and competitors at the retail level. Whereas from a customer's perspective, they constitute alternative supply options. So due to this hybrid situation, dual distribution can potentially give rise to conflicts of interest and concerns of information sharing. However, the dual distribution exemption, i.e. an exception to the general rule that vertical agreements between competitors cannot be blocked exempted, has been retained. So the dual distribution exemption has been retained and has in fact been extended to more levels of the supply chain to cover importers and wholesalers as well. But two key changes relate to first information exchange and second hybrid platforms. So information exchange in a dual distribution context will now only be exempted where it is 
firstly, directly related to the implementation of the vertical agreement, and secondly, necessary to improve the production or distribution of the contract goods or services. Helpfully, the current guidelines provide examples of information exchange that are likely to be exempted, such as technical, logistical, or performance-related information, and information which is likely to fall outside the exemption, such as information relating to future pricing, identified end users, and goods sold by a buyer under its own brand. The second change in relation to dual, dual distribution is hybrid platforms. So providers of online intermediation services, such as online marketplaces like Amazon, offer goods and services in competition with other companies using their own platforms and therefore also compete downstream for goods and services. So these hybrid platforms have been excluded from the dual distribution exemption on the basis that they may have an incentive to favor their own sales and the ability to influence the outcome of competition on those markets. So in summary, considerably more caution is required when it comes to dual distribution in the future, um, as the safe harbor was narrowed in EU regulation 2022-720 in respect of information exchange and hybrid platforms. The second a key area of change of EU regulation 2022-720 are parity obligations. Parity obligations require an undertaking to offer the same or better terms to its counterparty than those offered on third-party sales, marketing, and distribution channels. For example, on other platforms or direct distribution channels, such as the seller's own sales website. These parity obligations are also called most favored nation clauses. Previously, all type of most favored nation provisions were exempted. However, retail parity provisions relating to the conditions under which products are offered to end users have been subject to extensive enforcement action by a range of regulators in recent years. So these retail parity provisions are under the radar. So Article 51D of Regulation 2022-720 removes the exemption for cross-platforms or wide retail parity obligations. That means that where a company pledges to offer the same or better prices and conditions as um, on all of our distribution channels. Um, and uh, so now these wide retail parity obligations have been added to the list of excluded restrictions. That means that they will under no circumstances fall under the safe harbor provided by regulation 2022-720, and they must therefore be thoroughly assessed individually under Article 101 of the TFEU. Conversely, other types of parity obligations, including the so-called narrow parity provisions relating to conditions on direct sales channels and wholesale parity obligations, are still block exempted. However, a new Article 6 in this um, regulation 2022-720 warns that the benefit of the exemption may be withdrawn in certain circumstances and refers explicitly to the use of narrow retail parity provisions in concentrated platform markets where there is no evidence of efficiencies. So in summary, considerable more caution is required when it comes to parity obligations, most favored nations clauses in the future as the safe harbor was narrowed in EU regulation 2022-720 in respect of these obligations. Now, third area of change in the EU regulation, online sales restrictions. While the previous EU exemption blocks regulation was drawn up at a time when e-commerce was thought to require special protection. The Commission's evaluation showed, unsurprisingly, that this is no longer the case. As a result, dual pricing, where suppliers can charge different wholesale prices to the same buyer, depending on the sales channel, is no longer a hardcore restriction, subject to certain limiting principles. So online sales restrictions are no longer a hardcore restriction. 
Moreover, criteria imposed by suppliers for online offline sales in selective distribution systems no longer need to be equivalent, provided the online sales criteria do not have the object of preventing the effective use of the internet. A new Article 4E codifies the development of a recent EU case law, in particular Pierre Fabre and Coty. So I refer you to our previous article on uh, selective distribution, which explains at, at length those two case laws, Pierre Fabre and Coty. So this new article 4E of the EU regulation, 2022-720, stipulates that restrictions on the use of the online channel will be hardcore, where they have the object of preventing buyers or their customers from effectively using the internet to sell the goods and services, including restrictions preventing the use of one or more online advertising channels. Recital 15 re clarifies that a restriction will be a hardcore if its object is to significantly diminish the aggregate volume of online sales of the goods, services, or the possibility for consumers to buy them online. Further guidance is set out in the current guidelines for assessing online sales restrictions. So quality requirements, marketplace bans, online advertising restrictions, except for those relating to the most widely used providers, if they de facto ban the use of that advertising channel, and requirements to operate offline stores or make a, um, a min minimum absolute volume of sales offline will be block exempted. However, provisions amounting to a de facto prohibition of internet sales are excluded including requirements to only sell in physical stores, banning the use of a supplier's brand online, requiring a buyer to block a website access to customers outside the territory, or the use of um, foreign credit cards, or requiring a buyer to make a certain share of a total sales offline. Additionally, bans on price comparison websites and keyword bidding restrictions in such engine advertising are confirm to be hardcore restrictions as they prohibit the use of entire online ad advertising channels. And this codifies the commission's decision on guests. Again, you can find a reference to this case law on guests on our articles uh, on crefovi.com and crefovi.fr. The safe harbor has therefore been extended with respect to online sales restrictions in regulation 2022-720. Fourth, area which has been changed under this new EU regulation on block exemption. Well, the scope of the block exemption has been broadened in respect of active sale restrictions, which limit a buyer's ability to proactively approach customers and generally constitute hardcore restrictions. So the Commission's evaluation found that these rules were unclear and hampered suppliers in designing their distribution systems. A new and more flexible concept of shared exclusivity has been introduced. A supplier can now appoint a maximum of five distributors per exclusive territory, five distributors or customer group. Moreover, suppliers can oblige distributors to pass on restrictions of active sales to their immediate customers, which was not previously possible. Selective distribution systems have also received enhanced protection. Suppliers can now prevent buyers and their customers from selling to unauthorized distributors in a territory where the supplier operates a selective distribution system, regardless of whether those buyers and customers are located in or outside the territory. However, the combination of exclusive and selective distribution in the same territory, i.e. appointing an exclusive wholesaler plus selective, selected retailers, is still excluded from the block exemption for the EU. So in respect of active sales restrictions, the safe harbor has been extended in regulation 2022-70. Last but not least, the thief area of change relates to online platforms. Online platforms that meet the definition of online intermediation services so platforms which facilitate direct transactions between two other parties, such as Amazon or eBay. So these online platforms that meet the definition of online intermediation services are categorized as suppliers and cannot be 
categorized as a buyer in respect of the intermediated goods or services. The list of hardcore restrictions therefore applies to restrictions imposed by the platform, but not to restrictions Im imposed on the platform by sellers. Online platforms outside that definition have to self-assess whether they would be categorized as a buyer or a seller in respect of a vertical agreement. The current guidelines also clarify that online platforms generally are not considered genuine agents as they deal with too many sellers. There is a material imbalance in bargaining power and they bear significant market specific risks. Now let's have a look at the UK VABO regime and what key differences exist in this UK VABO framework compared to the EU regulation. The UK VABO is more closely aligned to EU regulation 2022-720 that might have been expected and that might perhaps have been the case if a revisions had been made with more water under the bridge post-Brexit. That said, there are a few differences. The first one relates to dual distribution. The UK VABO has a more lenient approach to dual distribution. While the VABO includes similar provisions around information exchange, hybrid platforms are currently not excluded from the dual distribution exemption. The CMA, so the Competition and Market Authority in the UK, noted in its recommendations to the Secretary of State that while it understood the competition concerns regarding hybrid platforms, it did not currently believe that there was sufficient evidence to warrant treating them differently to other platforms. So the VABO takes a more lenient approach to dual distribution than the EU regulation. However, the CMA will keep this under review. So while there is increased flexibility in the UK for now, this may change in the future. The second key difference between the UK VABO and the EU block exemption regulation relates to wide retail priority provisions. The VABO is more restrictive than the EU regulation, including wide retail parity clauses in its list of hardcore restrictions presumed to be illegal as opposed to simply excluding them from the benefit of the exemption. Additionally, unlike regulation 2022-720, which refers only to other online intermediation services, the VABO prohibition on wide uh, parity also applies to offline channels. So the third key difference between the UK VABO and the EU block exemption regulation uh, relates to distribution networks. The CMA also introduced a principle of shared exclusivity capped at a limited number of distributors rather than five, whilst it will also now allow active sales restrictions to be passed on in exclusive and selective distribution networks. Unlike in the UK, However, it will all allow suppliers to combine selective and exclusive distribution in the same territory as long as they are established at different levels of a value chain and the exclusive wholesaler is not also a member of the selective distribution system. So the VABO takes a more lenient approach than regulation 2022-207 with respect to exclusive distribution networks. Fourth key difference between the VABO and the EU regulation are online sales restrictions. Unlike the EU regulation, the CMA has not included a specific reference to online sales restrictions, amounting to a hardcore or excluded restriction in the VABO. However, the CMA's guidance and existing case law in the UK make clear that in practice, the UK regime is aligned with the EU one. So in practice, restrictions that prevent the effective use of the internet essentially amount to restrictions on the territories into which or customers to whom a distributor can sell, and, and they will be considered as hardcore restrictions also in the UK. In relation to non-complete clauses, which is the area where there are some key differences between the UK and the EU, non-complete clauses with a duration not exceeding five years are block exempted 
under both the VABO and regulation applicable in the EU. However, the UK VABO takes a stricter approach than the EU regulation with respect to non-complete obligations which are tacitly renewable beyond five years. Such obligations are excluded from the block exemption and assessed on a case-by-case -case basis in the UK. So the rest of the agreement containing the excluded non-compete clause may nevertheless benefit from the protection of the VABO, provided that the relevant conditions are met. So by contrast, non-compete obligations, which are tacitly renewable beyond five years, are covered by the EU regulation, provided that the contract can be renegotiated or terminated with a reasonable notice period and at reasonable cost. Another difference between the VABO and the EU regulation relate to their respective duration. Regulation 2022-207 will expire on the 31st of May 2034, in keeping with the usual 12-year duration for block exemption regulations. However, the UK VABO will cease to have effect on the 1st of June 2029. So six years earlier than the regulation 2022-207. The stated rationale for UK VABO's shorter duration is to enable the UK government to reflect and action market developments more quickly in the VABO successor. But this shorter duration will also mean that businesses will face changes and potential divergences from the EU regulation sooner. And last point, the UK VABO has now put in place an obligation to provide information. Parties are required to provide the CMA with information requested in relation to their vertical agreements within 10 working days or longer if the CMA agrees having regards to the particular circumstances of a case. If the parties fail without reasonable excuse to provide the requested information by the deadline agreed with the CMA, the CMA may cancel the block exemption for the relevant agreements with prospective effects only. This is a new addition to the CMA's wide ranging information gathering powers, which it has used extensively, giving rise to heightened enforcement action in areas such as merger control. No equivalent provision exists in the EU regulation. Although the Commission and national competition authorities in EU member states may withdraw the benefits of a block exemption in other circumstances. This is consistent with the fact that the CMA has been one of the most active European competition law enforcers pursuing vertical agreements in recent years. The CMA will likely continue to focus on vertical agreements within its monitoring and enforcement activity. To conclude, while the EU and the UK block exemption regimes are broadly aligned, there are some material divergences. Whilst the VBO takes a more stringent approach to wide retail parity clauses, it has a more lenient take in relation to dual distribution and exclusive distribution than EU regulation 2022-207. In practice, cross-border businesses may be unwilling to take different approaches between the EU and the UK, well, with all the, these countries being so close, you know, uh, geographically, in respect of a distribution networks, and may therefore be more likely to comply with whichever regime is more restrictive. This would imply that the more lenient aspect of each regime could have limited effect in reality, although it may at least be a comfort for businesses to know the scope is there. Therefore, it is prudent for pan-European businesses, businesses to draft any vertical agreement with the most stringent obligations under both the EU regulation 2022-207 and the UK VABO in mind. If they have not done so already during the one-year transition period, businesses with EU and or UK distribution operations must review the agreements in light of their new obligations under the EU regulation and the UK VABO. This is all for me today. Thank you so much, guys, for attending. And I look forward to seeing you very soon in the near future. Bye for now.